Hello, good morning, everyone. This is Erica with Aurora Heart Healing. And today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I am going to say this is kind of a vulnerable video, especially because it is an energy healing on myself. I will actually be doing the healing for myself. I will be talking through all of the energies that I find, the emotions. If I remember what it is, we don't have to connect the memory. Sometimes we just need to know what it was that was going on. Sometimes we don't need to know anything, just the emotions attached to it because our emotions are so powerful that they actually help create our reality. Big stuff, right? I usually take notes. I have a few different tools with me. I have a session reference form. I use the emotion code, body code, as well as core light healing from Barbara Ann Brennan. All of these just enhance the gifts that I have been given to share with all of you. I'm really excited about this one today because I think that so many people are not sure about what exactly a session looks like. And I really want to give people the opportunity of being able to say, this is what it is. This is what we do. This is how it works and why. I also use magnets. Magnets have the unique properties of positive and negative within them. And they actually help with activating your magnetic field because they have positive and negative in them already. So I actually swipe so that we can activate the vagus nerve and that vagus nerve actually releases endorphins in your body. Don't ask me too much about the science because someone else did the research on that. I just follow because I know that it works. Some people will feel a tingling sensation. Some people feel an immediate release. You can also get a little bit emotional as well, which is the number one reason why energy healing helps so much is because we are opening up the wound. We are understanding the wound. We are connecting our body, our spirit, our mind, our emotions all together to become one and whole. And that's one of the things that I really see a lot of people doing is numbing, shutting their emotion down, just saying, it's too hard for me to deal with. I can't feel this. And it's unfortunate because so many people suffer from depression, anxiety, panic attacks, things like that, because they say, I don't want to feel it. But friends, you have to feel it to heal it. And as you feel it, as you understand, recognize, bring yourself into wholeness, you begin to heal a deep part of you that has been pushed away for so long. So with that short introduction, I am going to start. I've let you know some of the tools that I am using today. Let's begin. All right, first, we use a pendulum. I use a pendulum because I want to get the most accurate information. I don't want to have my prejudices, my feelings, my thoughts interact with any of the session at all, which right now I am very much so stating my truth. So my pendulum is going in circles like, yep, that's true. That's true. I like to make sure that my sessions are not accurate. It's going back and forth stating no, no, that is not your truth. This pendulum is actually my own pendulum that I use only for my sessions. I have noticed that mixing energies with other people has made confusion in my pendulum. So this year, I actually went into a revamp on a lot of things in my business, and this is one of them. This is my pendulum, my pendulum alone. And this is helpful for me to, again, remain unbiased of any of the energies that come through, because sometimes they're a little hard to deal with. All right, let's start. Okay, I'm going to talk out loud. Usually I kind of just stay quiet, go in through everything and do it myself. But today we're going to start. So is it in core light healing? Yes, it is in core light healing. Okay. 
is it in the first energetic defense structure? So we have energetic defense structures that teach us how to defend ourselves from the world around us. And it's a great thing until it actually affects our relationships. It affects who we are as human beings, how we stand in our truth and how we believe in ourselves. Is it the porcupine? No. Is it withdrawal beside himself? Verbal denial. Verbal denial. All right. These are going to be some big things today because I can already feel it bubbling up. All right. Verbal denial associated with much energy in the head, a neck blockage, depleted energy in the lower half. Okay, so what I'm getting is that this verbal denial is actually creating severe blockages in my neck. And at times it is actually depleting my energy. So verbal denial, neck blockage, and low energy. Okay, now I am going to see, is there anything else that we need to know about this verbal denial? No. Is there emotions that are attached to it? Yes. All right, now my emotion code chart. Is the emotion in column A? Is it in an odd row? Is it in row two? Is it in row four? Four. Is it column A? Odd row. Uh, column A. One, two. <laughs> Indecisiveness. Which is funny because I kind of went back and forth a little bit confused in my words. So that definitely connects. Okay. Did this happen recently? No, this did not happen recently. Did this happen before the age of 30? Yes. Did that happen before the age of 20? No. 20 to 25, 26, 27, age 27. Okay. So this blockage started at age 27 although there could be a lot of other things attached to it. So let's just continue to see. Is there any hidden emotions, any residual energies, any emotional resonances to this verbal denial? Is there anything else that we need to know? Can we go ahead and release this? So we cannot release it. It is still telling me, no, my energy that is flowing through, and through me is still telling me we have to know more about this. Okay, so is it a specific event that happened that I need to know about? It's a specific event that happened at age 27. Now, uh, we don't have to know the exact moment, but we can figure out some of the things that need to be said and done. So uh, does this have to do with my children? No. Uh, relationships? Okay, so it has to do with relationships. Uh, is this relationship a romantic relationship? No, a friendship? Is it family? Family relationship, okay. Familiar. So this is a familiar, a family relationship. Okay, is there more that we need to know? We need to know a little bit more. Uh, is it a specific person in my family? Is it the family as a whole? Okay. So as I am thinking about these things, I'm actually opening up my memories to it as well. You don't have to do this through every single session, but my energy field needs to know. My subconscious has this recording in my mind, replaying this indecisiveness over this familiar relationship that is holding me back from being able to fully express my truth. So family, there's not a specific person. It is a, was it a perspective? Okay. My family's perspective. Is it a perspective of me? Okay. So it is about the perspective of who I am as an individual, which as a black sheep, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Is there more emotions attached to this? Is it a regular trapped emotion? It is not a regular trapped emotion. All right. I'm going to go back because this is three books of information 
all condensed into one. This is a huge study thing. If you ever know anything about Dr. Barbara Ann Brennan, she's incredible. She has so much information and it's been really helpful to me to understand myself a little bit deeper. All right. So is this a soul emotion? Is it a divine being emotion? Is it a higher self emotion? So I am getting a strong yes. This is a higher self emotion. All right. Okay. This is a memory of your identity as a higher self feeling. A higher self to a human is a being, a divine being to a higher self. Okay. So this is where it's at. Feeling the fracture that exists in our true nature and intuition. The split feeling between our soul and our divine being. We developed a balancing voice between them to lead our thoughts. So there has been a split, a fracture within my true nature due to some of these perspectives that have been put on me to say this is who you need to be this is who you have to be to be accepted to be loved to have a tribe and I'm getting a strong guess because that's exactly how I feel and that's something that I've been working on a lot lately so it does not surprise me that this is coming up right now all right so I'm just gonna make a, a little note of what that means to me, fracture. Oh, this one's a hard one. <laughs> a fracture that exists in true nature and intuition. Okay. So right now I'm feeling a lot of stuff. I'm feeling a lot of the indecision that has led me to really question who I am, question what it is that I want to do in my life, because this is actually around the same time that I started practicing energy healing. And I changed my whole life from being a workaholic, from being very sad and depressed to saying, I'm going to do something different. And my family didn't really look at it as this is a great thing for you and it was more of you're crazy this is never gonna work you need to quit you need to stop this is bad so is this where it's coming from and notice I'm not moving my hand I'm actually using my desk for stability so that you can just see that it's not moving some people they're like you're moving your hand I used to not use stability for it, but at this point, it's like, you guys, if you're already skeptical, what are we doing here? Because the skeptics are just not our forte at this point, right? <laughs> okay, so let me get back into the session. Is there any other, uh, is there an emotion attached to the higher self emotion? No. Is it just the fracture? of my true nature and my intuition splitting. Yeah, okay. Is there anything else that we need to know? Yes, is it in core light healing? Is it in experiences? Okay, so I have expanded because in the emotion code, they have 60 emotions, but we can actually feel over 120 emotions in our body. These are chemical reactions that are in our body. So I am going to look for uh, Brene Brannon's Atlas of the Heart. And this is one of her charts that I actually was guided to use and said, you got to use this because she knows what she's talking about. This is a, a researcher on emotion. So is it places where we go and we're uncertain or too much? Places we go when we're hurting, when life is good, when we compare with others, when we feel wronged, when we self-assess, when we fall shame. Oh, shame. I didn't even finish that. We fall short. When we feel that we fall short, we feel ashamed. So the emotion that is attached to this higher self emotion 
is shame. All right. Another thing that I've been really working on, and yes, this is extremely vulnerable, but as a society, we've become so unattached to how we feel and how we look at others. This is why so much of us are hurting. So many of us are just in this really low vibration energy because we do not recognize the fact that we all hurt the same way. We all hurt. Even if the experience might be different, we're all hurting in a way. <sighs> okay, shame. Is there anything else that I need to know about this shame? And I'm just going to give you a little bit of information. Shame is when I think I am a bad person for what I believe. I think the whole entirety of me is wrong. Like I don't belong. Like I am not worth even the second glance. And shame is something that I've actually been working on a lot, especially in this field, which does not surprise me that this is coming up right now because I am here to be vulnerable with all of you. All right, shame. Is there anything else that we need to know about this shame? Okay, can we release this verbal denial? All right, now I've connected the emotion to the experience. I've connected it to what I remember it being was when I first got into this incredible modality. And as I was evolving, people were not happy with the changes that I was making for my best self, because that is pushing boundaries and creating boundaries, not more, more than anything, creating boundaries that people had to push up against. And they didn't like that. Oh, Erica always used to do this for me. Yeah. Erica used to do that for you because she didn't have boundaries and it was really hard for her to say no. And now I am stepping in my truth more and more and more. And I am saying, no, I will not accept that behavior. No, I will not take care of everything for you. No, I am going to take what's my responsibility and what's your responsibility is secondary to what I need for myself and my family. Okay, so... Okay, so when I do an emotional release, the emotions come up, the feelings, the energy, the experience, and I just let myself feel it. I let myself feel the shame, the feeling that I am bad for being here in front of you today, for feeling what I feel for the experiences, for being different, for crying even. <laughs> and those are the feelings that are genuine and they are part of who I am. And I've experienced that a lot in my family and in relationships that I have had. And even now, I'm looking at this and thinking there might be someone out there that will take this vulnerability and poke fun at it, try to humiliate or embarrass me, but I'm human and I deserve to talk about how I feel. And it is okay. It is okay to feel my feelings. I am not going to be hiding them anymore. I don't want to hide them anymore because when I hid them, I was on antidepressants. I was suicidal. I was sad and upset and hurt constantly. And I struggled with a lot of worth in myself. So verbal denial denying what it is that I feel, indecisiveness, 
really having a hard time with my change and my evolution and the struggle that came with that higher self emotion. It was a fracture of my natural self, my intuition, my spirit. There was a fracture and I'm feeling this way, but everyone's telling me to do this. I want this so bad. It's completely altered me and made me a better person for me. And these people are angry because they don't like what they see. Now I have boundaries that they don't like, that don't fit them and what they want from me. And the emotion of shame, feeling like I'm a bad person for being who I am. <gasps> okay. That feels good to know. I talked to someone and I was reading, I read a lot. I've got like three books going on right now. And in those books, it talks about you cannot feel happy without processing the pain. You just can't. <laughs> you just cannot feel happy without knowing and understanding and fully processing all those painful experiences that you have had, because there's always this thing, this dwelling in the past, this dwelling in the, the emotional baggage that we have. We all carry it. And if you say that you don't, then I think that there's maybe some other things you really want to look at. Okay, let's continue. Is there anything else that we can release today? No, is this everything that we could release today? Yes. All right. Well, this one was a really big one. This was a huge vulnerability moment for me of, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is how I help people. Because if you feel sad, if you feel depressed, if you feel anxious or have panic attacks and you do not know why, we can find why and we can help you release it. You can let that shit go. <laughs> And it's the most amazing thing to let it go. I mean, who wants to carry that around with them every day? Feeling a fracture within me of who I am, what I have to offer, what my worth and my value is in this world because of the perspective of other people. I don't, I don't want to live like that. And I'm very happy and very fulfilled in what it is that I'm doing here today. Showing you that the world might chew you up and spit you out. It just might. But there are other people that are here for you that'll say, let's walk this road together. I will walk this road with you. Because as scary as this is here... I did this in front of everyone. I myself actually provide a space on Zoom or in my office where you are safe to express without the judgment because we weren't here to judge each other. Although we do it very well. Uh, my daughter this morning was telling another woman, she said, yeah, I, those people are really judgy and they didn't make me feel very good. And I sat there and I thought, wow, my seven-year-old felt so judged when she didn't get a part in a play. That's what we live with every day, but we do not have to. We can step out of the box and say, this is where it ends. This is where I put myself in a safe environment where there is no judgment. There's just, let's open up and look at the box. Let's look at what's inside of it and love it to healing. Love it to light. Love ourselves more because we understand what we're going through. Love ourselves that much more because we say, I don't want to be alone in this feeling anymore. I want to understand myself because I am important. What I feel is important and I matter. And this very moment right now, I am telling all of you that I matter. And I hope that you know that you do too. So have a wonderful day. So much love, so much light. 
guidance. I hope that you all are surrounded and enveloped in love and appreciation for who you are as a person. Hurt people hurt people. So let's look at the hurt and heal it together so that you don't have to hurt so much and it doesn't hurt others as well. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. And like, comment, and subscribe.